Order! 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 You are an incorrigible delinquent at times. <laughs> Behave yourself, man! Uh, Sanjeev Javid, um, what was the reason for shifting six billion of corporation tax revenues out of some years into the year that you have to hit a surplus target? Well, actually, that goes back to the previous budget, where the Chancellor announced then that he wanted to change the timing of corporation tax receipts to make sure they come in earlier. A number of companies, you know, as part of the sort of consultation process, came back and said, "Look." Ideally, we don't want this, but can you give us more time? And this is a consequence of the Chancellor agreeing to give more time. So, of course, that's going to have a shifting impact, and then that has a net result mm. on the numbers. Well, you would be happy for us to see all the papers on this change and to release all the emails that have been exchanged on why you're doing it and the various well, articles. I think actually, the, the, well, it's just, it is a bit convenient, isn't it, to get six billion in the last year that all you All the need information to be your on that is already here. out there. If you look at the, the announcement in the, the, in the previous budget, the response from a lot of the companies, but the, you know, the overall result of this budget, you know, from what we've seen today, of course there's a change in the growth forecast, if we've uh, just heard from yourself and Robert, uh, some of that was to do with productivity uh, changes, some of it was to do with changes in the global economy, we are one of the most open economies in the world, when the OECD, the IMF, they downgrade global growth, of course that's going to have an impact. But sorry, on Robert us. has just told us it's less to do with the global growth than it is to do with the productivity well, it's to story. Do, it's, to do, it's to do with both. And right. let's look at the productivity issue as well. But that is also uh, very important. And I'm glad you're highlighting it because we as a country have had a long-running productivity problem over successive governments. You're something that's just been confirmed. And when there's a change in productivity, of course, it's going to have a knock on impact. But we've also seen over the last year, as Robert just mentioned, the Congressional Budget Office, they downgraded their productivity yeah. by more than but they, we did. But they are starting from 20% ahead of us, aren't they? they, just, are, they absolutely, they it, are. It, it is interesting, because you have been mm. in power. I know you haven't been business secretary, mm. so it's not been your beat for that whole period. But, I mean, what do you think we should conclude about productivity? You've been in power for six years, Conservative-led government. Should we basically think, actually, productivity is just something governments can't really can't really change would you no no I think I think that would be wrong productivity is one of our number one priorities this Parliament now, but let's just go back because your question is we've been in power well, obviously with the coalition yeah. government mm -hmm. to begin with but since 2010 our priority back in 2010 was frankly economic rescue we had just gone through the biggest recession in almost 100 years we had the biggest budget deficit of any G20 economy we just had the biggest world's biggest bank bailout so economic rescue was the priority then. Frankly, it wasn't productivity, it was economic rescue. We had to get the economy growing again. We had numbers today right. which confirmed we have more people employed than ever before. No, 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 we've done very and well on employment. And now the priority yeah. of this government is productivity. And that's why in the first few weeks of this new government, the, along with the Treasury, I published a productivity plan, very detailed, you're welcome to read it. You probably right. already have a look and, at and it. And action that we can take. Have you modelled the effect it is going to have on productivity? Well, it's, it's hard. These are long-term changes. There's no silver bullet, but things mm. like investing in skills, in infrastructure, more competitive markets, exports, that's all part of the plan. What I have modelled is that if we could match, as a country, US productivity levels... Well, we'd be 20% we, 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 we would uh, stop going we, to work we would, on Friday, Actually, it, would, it would mean something like £25,000 for every household, and that's the only way we're going to raise yeah. living standards, but and we, that's why we take it so right. seriously. Okay. So, just to be clear, you do think you can affect productivity. Over the you long think term, you have there's a plan, no overnight So, 2019, solution. we can come back to you and, um, and we can say... It will take a number right. of years, but I'm Let, glad that this government is the first to actually be dealing with Let's look with at some of the things that you have said you will do and you have not, because um, the overall debt level was first, I think, going to fall as a percentage of GDP. 2014 didn't, then 2015, now it's 2016. What, what should we make of the fact uh, that you failed that more than once? I mean, who has been, who's been fired for failing well, to meet the fiscal mandate on that really well, I think what score? you should make of it is, first of all, let's respect that we actually now, for once, have an independent body, the OBR, and there's a good opportunity well, to, to 
give credit to Robert and his team for the work that they do. They have transformed the way that we look at these fiscal events because now we can rely on these numbers and they take into account a lot of external factors. There used to be a time but, but, when but chancellors could just set fix the target. These. So Robert didn't yeah. set the target. You set no, the we, target. No, ab absolutely. We, Robert's we, merely told us that you failed to meet the target. Leave him out of it. I'm asking but, who who is losing their job because you failed to meet your target? And you when, went into the election saying, trust us, we're credible and we know what we're doing. When there's a change in forecast, even the smallest change in GDP can have a big okay. knock-on impact on numbers. And our central mission that the Chancellor set out back in his first budget of this new parliament was that we are going to make sure that this country starts living within its okay. means again. Well, he said one. there will be a surplus park by the one. end of this parliament, and that's still what is forecast. The welfare cap, because you introduced it in 2014. You said at the time, under Labour, our welfare bills got out of control. That is why we're introducing the welfare cap. But you failed to meet, to hit the welfare cap. Well, for, well again, the, a, a small change in forecast, well, you that, can have an we impact on that. We all knew there were going to and be changes in the forecast. That's why lots of people said, don't introduce a silly welfare cap at the time. The people, people were saying at the time, well, I, a I welfare actually, cap, you're going to be like 2% off and you're going to miss your welfare cap. And you have. Are you saying we shouldn't judge you on your failure to meet the welfare cap. No, I'm saying you judge us on the discipline that we provide to try and bring the public finances under control. What we've seen since... No, but Hang this on. is a, this but, an important but are point. Are you saying we shouldn't judge you on your failure to meet the welfare cap? You should, we should be judged on our central mission, which is to make sure this country lives within its means. Now, controlling so we should just welfare, put aside the welfare cap and not judge that one on its own? No, because I'm not you, so you put a lot of... You invested a lot of reputation and a lot of people at the time said it was simply put there to make life difficult for the Labour Party, it was a partisan thing. You put a lot into it and you, you appear now to be saying judge us on the whole picture, not on that piece it's, of it's it. It's actually, it's, it's put there to install discipline for whatever but it government hasn't worked, is in office. It? You haven't met well, it. It's, it's, let, let's judge it in the, on the basis that we've got this cap, if the cap's breached, it has then, breached. The, then the welfare secretary will come in front of Parliament and explain what's happened, So is Ian Duncan why, Smith going to do that? Election. So, sorry, is Ian well, Duncan Smith going to lose his job? Is he going to apologise? Is he going to be taken to court for breaking the law and not meeting the welfare cap? Well, what, it, what it will make sure happens is that the discipline that we've put in place works. So now what the discipline? government... The government of the day, so whichever, this isn't put in for the Labour Party or the what Conservative discipline? Party. It hasn't worked. It's what, a, what consequence is there to you failing to meet it? And if it doesn't have any consequence, in what way is it, a, it imposing discipline? It will mean that when the government now looks at this, and as we've set out, is that we have to make sure that welfare is controlled as spending, that we right. continue to cut it, and uh, we have the proper measures in place to make sure that we can meet well, our that, overall budget targets. That is very interesting, and a lot of people will say... It is because you have not delivered the welfare reform that you wanted that this week you've had to go out and take more than a billion quid away from people on personal independence payments to try and get welfare under the cap. Still hasn't worked, incidentally, mm. but to try and keep welfare down. Well, for... you, in effect, you are asking people with disabilities to be poorer because you have failed to deliver the welfare reforms that you said no, you were going that's, to. That's not the case at all. I mean, that is wrong on so many accounts. Well, first of all, the welfare reform that we've put in place is delivering results. For the first time, we've got a system in place that makes sure that people who are out of work, that choose work, will always be better off. That was not the case before. If you look at the reports on universal credit, it has made a sea change to people's attitude to taking up work. I, I, and then also on personal uh, independence payments. Personal independent payments and its predecessor, the DLA, if you take it together, they're up £3 billion in real terms since 2010. The number of people getting those payments well, I think is higher a than lot it of was people in 2010. That's a failure of your welfare. welfare no, 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 I know. What did it? No, what did it? No, look, you, 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 please okay. allow me to respond okay. because it's actually a recognition that you have a welfare system that looks after the most vulnerable in society. And of course, I put disabled people at the top of the list. Right. That's why spending has increased. And even during the life of this parliament, it's projected it's going to rise by another billion. To... So I don't accept for a second that we've cut spending on disability payments. I'm going to play one clip and give you a chance to answer. This is Graham Ellis. He's a lifelong Conservative voter. He's part of the Conservative Disability Group, who's, who's quit that today. Let's just hear what okay. he had to say. The first story I came across on the BBC News website was, was about the proposed changes to PIP and proposing to take 200,000 200, people out of the benefit and 
lowering the eligibility of others. And then I went on to read the story about the raising of the threshold for uh, higher rate earners. And immediately it, it just hit me that it was a case of robbing the vulnerable to pay the rich. Uh, you know, they're saying they need to make savings and yet they can make tax cuts. Uh, and I'm sure people in this country would rather see people looked after rather than see huge tax cuts. What's your answer to Graham Ellis? What I'd say to Graham is please don't believe all the misinformation that's out there. I would not be part of a government that cuts benefits for disabled people. You've just we taken have a billion, you're making we have a billion not. pounds of savings. We, from we it. have increased benefits for people that are disabled by three billion over the last parliament and they're rising by a further billion projected during this parliament. That's an increase. We need to hold it there, Sajid. Thank you very much indeed. Well, Seema Malhotra, um, listening to that, listening to the budget today, your shadow chancellor, John McDonnell, said it was morally reprehensible to cut benefits for people with disabilities. Is that your view? I think people will be staggered to hear what Sajid Javid has just said. There's said to be four billion, over four billion taken out uh, in terms of support for, for people with disabilities. You're, you're accumulating it over lots of years then, aren't you? We, you yes. we normally but do it per year just to year make it well, easier. In the final year yeah. as well, Evan, that is set to be 31% of the net savings in that final year coming on the backs of those with disabilities. These do you are use the word morally reprehensible? Well, I just wonder look, whether you use that, I think, that word. Look, I think that's a phrase that John used, and I think it's one that people will understand for this but simple do you reason. Use it? I'm asking a very but, simple question. I, think, or not. I, I, I would say, I would say yeah. it is, is close to that because what you're saying, what you're saying is that you will do almost like a reverse Robin Hood. This is taking from people who use those payments to be able to make improvements in their home, be able to get to work it's going to be a cost to the state in other ways to take this away this is a budget that was built on the back of the right. fa on his of, of George Osborne's failures and has failed to invest for the future let's ask what you would do though because I know you have a borrowing target it's not as nearly as ambitious as, as the conservative borrowing target meeting the cost of day-to-day -day spending not all spending um, we're not doing that at the moment so just give me in a couple of sentences what you would do if you were giving your budget today you're absolutely right. And what we would be looking for would be fair taxation, so tackling tax avoidance. There are some measures brought in today and we'll look at the detail. We would also be saying that you need to invest for growth. This was an attempt wait, to wait, sidestep... Wait, wait. I, before we get to the growth bit, just give but, us the, what, the, the difficult be, decisions, not the easy ones. No, I, that's I, not a diff that, that, I, I think this is an important point because this is saying you want to invest in new technologies. You this want sounds to, like more borrowing, not less borrowing. Though. Well, Let's some say. of it might need to be borrowing for the, right. for the future because, and that's what we've said, you would need to invest for the future, you need to invest so that you can see the growth in uh, productivity, whether that's through developing skills, uh, through developing infrastructure, but also we would say you'd want to tackle waste. I'll give you just one example, you Evan. still no, saying me waste. Give you, I mean, we've well, been me give through the most example. horrific change in the public sector. Let me just give Everything you one Everything has been example. trimmed and you're still saying Let you can go you out there and example. find waste. Housing benefit. It is forecast to be 350 million more than George Osborne for, uh, uh, su suggested last summer. And the reason is the government has failed to invest in housing. We know from recent data as well that there are over 200,000 fewer households owning their own home than when George Osborne uh, became Chancellor. So just to be clear, so your budget today would have had more spending, uh, maybe some cuts and avoidance of tax and, uh, you know, some increases through avoidance but there's no difficult decision that you would have made basically nothing that would have been taking something from somebody because I wonder whether that is exactly what people fear about the Labour Party is that they see what's morally reprehensible but they have no tough decisions that they want to take themselves I don't think that's fair Evan because what we're saying here is if you want to balance the books you can do that through two ways one is cutting spending and you can do that through waste as well and the other is making sure that you have ways which are increasing tax receipts and what we've said is that you need to be investing for growth we've seen a government now if you look at the failures on exports failures on uh, our, uh, wage growth also set to <coughs> to fall these are ways in which you are seeing people paying the price of the failures to run the economy well. OK, there's a huge debate about whether those measures work or whether they achieve what you want them to. We won't get into that now. But let me ask you this. The Conservative government is aiming to take us back to a relatively small state, 37% or thereabouts of national income. Give us a clue, roughly, what sort of size have you in mind? 
for the state. Well, we'll lay out our plans as near the time, obviously, to the next election. But what we will say is this: roughly, I mean, within five percent of national no, income. What we will say, what we will, what, are, what we will 40? say is that this is this is a government 42? that is seeing no, you're local, getting back no, to them. I'm asking government about being you. decimated. Local government being decimated. This is a budget that has done nothing for the health service and the health deficit, a health service deficit that we're seeing. So. In terms of saying what do people care about, what do people want? This people is a long non-answer to my question. You're not but I, what I'm saying is people want public services and they want a state that's on their side.